You know, British Railways gets most of the credit for nationalizing its rail systems, but it's actually been done by someone long before them. And if anyone were to do it, it would have to be the United States. And what better time than during the Great War? By 1917, America was completely involved in the World War I effort, most notably with their prior preparedness movement, making soldiers as ready as possible for combat. The railroads, on the other hand, were not so ready. They just couldn't handle the heavy wartime workload on their own. So the government stepped in, like always, and on December 28, 1917, they nationalized all American railroads under one name, the United States Railroad Administration, or better known as the USRA. Changes began right away, and there were a lot of changes. Similar to their British descendant, the USRA was divided into several sections, the East, West, and South. Competing passenger services were cut back, with hundreds of identically operating passenger trains taken out of service. This was done to make room for as many freight trains as possible, especially on already crowded rail lines. Coal trains were especially given high priority, so that there wouldn't be as many fuel shortages. Even with these changes, the USRA did even more, and they soon did what they are most well known for doing, creating their standard engine types. That's right, British Railways made standard engines, and so did the USRA. They made 12 different types of steam engines, all of which having a specific purpose on the railroad, whether it be heavy freight, or switching, or anything else. On a side note, the USRA received even more engines as an unexpected gift of sorts. During this time, over a thousand 210 type engines were being built for railways over in Russia. Most of them had already been delivered or were on their way until the Bolshevik Revolution stopped this. It left several hundred engines stranded in America. With nowhere else for them to go, they were rebuilt to American standards and sent to work across USRA's system for the next several years. Back to USRA's own designs, they all became wildly popular, and they would set the stage for engine production all the way up until the end of steam in the 50s and 60s. The USRA itself was short-lived, however. With World War I ending in 1919, it was shut down shortly after by the Railroad Transportation Act in early 1920. This act had the railroads return to private ownership, and the Interstate Commerce Commission was given more power over the railroads than ever before. And that is the short-lived story of the USRA. Like many other pieces of railroad lore, it doesn't have much surviving media or coverage, so it's a little hard to talk about. But it definitely made its mark in railroad history when it was a thing. And it was the closest American railroads ever got to nationalization. Until Amtrak and Conrail in the 70s, but everyone knows about those. If you happen to be someone who doesn't know about those, don't worry. Here's a quick rundown and then I'll be done. By the end of the 60s, passenger railroads were doing very bad with barely any ridership and rundown equipment. So the government stepped in and made all the passenger railroads into one, except for a few who said no. It was called Amtrak and gradually made train travel popular again, and is still doing well to this day. Amtrak was doing alright for its early years, but Northeast Freight Railroads weren't doing so good, so the government stepped in yet again and consolidated the railroads. They painted everything in a nice blue, and things were good until the 90s when Conrail was split among CSX and Norfolk Southern. Okay, the end.